Hello, high water viewers, and welcome to today's episode on dam mechanics and hydrostatic pressure. Today we're going to do just a quick condensed episode where we'll do a very quick review of the topic and then jump straight into our example problem. Okay, so dam mechanics. Um, obviously the main force on a dam is going to be due to hydrostatic pressure. And so if we were to look at the hydrostatic pressure, uh, you know, imagining that we're like dry, uh, drawing this vertical line on the face, what you're going to have is this linear um, distribution of pressure. There's going to be this differential pressure across the vertical surface where there's a linear increase based on the density of the fluid and of course the local gravity and the height. So this would be equal to rho gh, density, gravity, height. This is your height. And this is going to be uh, the pressure force acting on that dam. Now, for a vertical surface, you know, you, you've pretty much got things figured out because the force due to pressure is just going to be working horizontally against that dam. I mean, I guess you know, from the other side because the water's over here. But if you were to look at a horizontal surface, there would be no, it would basically just be you know, here or any other point, but there's not going to be a pressure differential. It will just be one single pressure across that surface acting on it. And then if you have an inclined plane, that's where things start to get a little bit more complicated. So if you had, you know, a, a dam like this or whatever, where you have a wider base, and so you have your fluid over here. Well, now you actually have two components of force. You have a horizontal force working on the dam, but then you have a vertical force working down on the dam, which actually can be beneficial. This is one of the reasons sometimes there is an inclined face on a dam, is because this force will actually help prevent any sort of tipping of the dam and help actually secure it better. So, okay, that's the basic review of our hydrostatic pressure. Okay, in today's example problem, we are going to be looking for the hydrostatic force on a 30-foot submerged vertical plane. And we can, in this case, neglect atmospheric pressure. So, all right, so we got our vertical plane. It's going to be 30 foot. And then we have our water surface at the atmosphere. And then we're going to have that linear increasing pressure. So at this point, at 30 foot, it'll be equal to rho gh. That'll be our pressure here. Or maybe we'll call it, you know, P30. Okay. So, our pressure, rho gh, and we're going to be using imperial units since we're working with uh, feet for a height, and that can get a little tricky sometimes when you start working with forces. So we have our density of water, 62.4 pounds per cubic foot, that's just you know standard water density. We have our 32.2 feet per second squared for Earth's gravity. 30 feet of height in the sample or in the problem statement. And then we have our GC, which is where things can get a little weird, where this is one pound force second squared over 32.2 pound feet. Now you've probably seen this before, but as a reminder of what it is, it's a conversion factor used when working with US units so that pound force and pounds are numerically equal. It does the unit conversion, but it also 
keeps the values numerically equal, even though they're not really the same thing. And I, I think that's what tends to cause some confusion, you know, since it's the same number, um, you know, but it's not the same thing. So anyways, let's kind of take a look at the unit here because we want pressure in a force per area, right? So if we cancel out our seconds and then we cancel out the pounds of mass and then we cancel out our feet in the gravity, then what we're left with just is the density and the height, right? Because these basically completely cancel each other out. And so, and then also converts from pound to pound force. So what we wind up with is 1866 pound force per feet squared. Okay. However, that is the pressure at this point, right? And we can even kind of do a little bit of a check here if we quickly uh, convert that. Actually, let me, if we multiply that into one foot squared over 144 inches squared. That gives us a pressure of 12.96 PSI. And that probably seems right if you've worked with hydrostatics before because one atmosphere, which is you know, usually about 14.7 PSI, is roughly equal to about 33 feet of water. So you can kind of use that as a judge and go, well, this is 30, this is 33, this is a little less than 14. So yeah, it sounds like we're where we should be. However, that is the pressure here. Now we need the force or we want, we're interested in the force. Now we can multiply that by the area. However, you, this is obviously not uh, it's not the same force all the way across, right? So we either want to average this or find the area of the triangle. Mathematically, it's the same thing. However, you know, whatever is easier for you to kind of conceptually visualize there. Uh, so, wow, I actually don't have this worked out mathematically, but it's gonna be, the force is gonna be equal to pressure times area, which is going to be 1866 times 30 feet of height. And then we can multiply by one foot unit width, and then we can get the force per unit width of the dam. So we don't know the width of the dam, but we can figure it out per foot of width. And then we have to either average that or find the area of the triangle, uh, which is going to be something. I'm going to have to pause the video and actually do the math. Uh, okay, we're back with the solution of 27,990 pounds force per unit width of the dam. So, okay, that is it for this example problem and for this episode. Sorry for not having that calculation prepared in advance, but if you did find this episode helpful, then the best way to share it with your fellow engineers is to hit the like button so that it goes through the YouTube algorithm and gets out there to all those other people. Either way, we definitely appreciate everyone who has helped out the channel and even watched the videos for us. So uh, thank you very much, and we'll see you next time.